remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. something i am not sure when it comes to this chris christie bridgegate thing that's been happening for the last week i am not sure if i should look at this as a uh, glass half full kind of thing or a glass half empty kind of situation i'm not sure i mean if you've watched his show for any length of time at all you understand and you know that I am not a Chris Christie fan. I can't stand Chris Christie. The thought of Chris Christie being the Republican presidential nominee in 2016 turns my stomach. In fact, if Chris Christie is the nominee in 2016, there's a very good chance that I'll vote third party. Chris Christie, to me, suffice it to say, is everything that is wrong with the establishment Republican Party today. He's a guy who thinks we can reach across the aisle to those political enemies who would do this country in. He's a guy who thinks it's appropriate to have his hand out there for that government money after Hurricane Sandy. He thinks it's the government's job to come in and clean up the mess after disaster. It is not. So, yeah, my first instinct is anything that would take Chris Christie out of the presidential nominating line, anything that would end Chris Christie's political career, would be something I would be in favor of ordinarily. But then I look at the other side of the coin, and I look at the scandal itself, and uh, as I look at the scandal itself, being the fact that he shut down, or had somebody shut down, a couple of lanes in traffic to put the screws to a mayor who he had a problem with, I gotta say, I'm not that offended by it. You know, I mean, if I take Chris Christie out of the equation... And I take the whole Republican and Democrat thing out of the equation. And I take conservatism and liberalism out of the equation. And I look at this scandal on its own merits. I say, what's the big deal? Really? Close a couple lanes of traffic to get a little bit of revenge on someone who wasn't playing ball with him. Isn't that what practically every politician in the history of the world has ever done? I mean, I'm not saying it's... Marquise of Queensberry rules, but come on. I mean, I saw someone online claim that this was worse than Watergate. No, it wasn't. Uh, on the scale, on the scandal scale of one to ten, with one being the president wearing mom jeans in a, in a photo, and ten being Benghazi, I would say this scandal rates about a two, maybe a two point five. And for the record, Watergate really wasn't that bad either. I'd rate that as about a four. It's just that the nation way overreacted to it, but that's probably another discussion for another time. The bottom line is, as far as scandals go, it's not like Chris Christie was sending the IRS after his political opponents to keep them from the political process, or uh, it's not like Christie was denying assistance to United States ambassadors overseas whose lives were in danger. No, he didn't do any of those things. Well, I guess if either one of those things happened, the media would just just be apoplectic about that. I mean, look what they've done to Christie. So they, they should be over the top. If any of those things ever happened, no, wait, I guess they did happen. Hmm. wonder why the media wasn't so pissed off about that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck in the middle on this thing. Can't stand Christie. Want him out of the picture. But I can't really get that mad about this scandal. But I do think that there are two things we can learn from Chris Christie's Bridgegate. Two things we can learn going forward for all of us who are conservatives, all of us who are Republicans, even if we're only Republicans for the time being. We'll see how things play out. Two things we can learn. Number one, it shows that anyone, whatever party, whomever, anyone, will use the power of government to their advantage to go after their enemies. Now, I've told you on this show before, that I would love to be the one person who comes out here and tells you that if I somehow ever got elected to a position of power, let's say a senator, a governor, even the president, if I were elected to any position like that, I would love to be the one person who would come out here and tell you there's no way that I will ever abuse that power to go after my enemies. I, I promise you I will not misuse my power in office to go after those who have wronged me. I will simply keep my nose to the grindstone and only do what's right for the American people. I would love to tell you that, but it would be absolute bullshit. 
Why? Because I'm a human being. And like all other human beings, I have an enemies list too. You can't really live a worthwhile life without developing an enemies list, and I certainly fit that description. So yeah, if I were in government, I probably would use that power to go after my enemies. And that's where the lesson comes in. That's where lesson number one comes in. The lesson is, this is why we need government to be as powerless and small as possible. Because that way, even if any of us wanted to use the power of government to go after our enemies, and let's face it, we all do, if government is small and powerless, we can't use it that way. It keeps us from misusing it. So that's lesson number one. And lesson number two of this scandal is this. And this really applies for Chris Christie. No matter how much you reach across the aisle to our political enemies on the left, no matter how much you kiss up to them, no matter how much you try to see some sort of validity in their viewpoint that does not exist, no matter how much you try to kiss up to the media and try to be the golden boy of the New York Times or CNN or the media or whomever, no matter how much you try to do that, they will always stab you in the back the first time they get the opportunity. Chris Christie kissed up to all those people for a long time. He reached across that aisle in New Jersey so many times. He was the fair-haired boy of the media for so long. He's the reasonable Republican that can bring independent voters, all the media would say. The New York Times would laud him. CNN would laud him. NBC would laud him. Everybody would talk about him as the most reasonable Republican until this happened. And then what did they do? They turned on you and went after you with full guns ablaze. It ain't the first time. Look at John McCain. For years, the media propped him up as the reasonable Republican. The media propped him up as the, the poster boy for how you get things done in Washington, how you reach across the aisle, how you build consensus, how you lead, until he became the Republican nominee, at which point he became the incarnation of all that was evil to the Democratic Party and the media, the news media in this nation. It didn't about face. Ditto for Mitt Romney. For years, he was seen as the reasonable Republican. For years, he was seen as the guy that could bring people together. Hey, he did health care in Massachusetts. What a nice guy Mitt Romney is. He proved health care could be done in Massachusetts. Then he wins the nomination. Then suddenly, he's an evil, rich, out-of-touch, corporate-rating bastard who's no good to even breathe air. It happens every single time you try to reach across that aisle. You know, the Democratic Party and the news media in this nation are masters of what we used to call the Tennessee handshake. The Tennessee handshake, that's where someone shakes your hand with the right hand and they have a knife in their left trying to stab it in your back. That's what they've done to Chris Christie. They did it to John McCain. They did it to Mitt Romney. They've done it to countless others. And that's the lesson. You can't reach across the aisle to those people. They have no character. They have no morals. They're always out for their own gain. That means we got to be the same way. Democrats in this country and the news media in this country, with the exception of Fox News and a few others, bring absolutely nothing to the table in terms of political discourse. They must be eliminated. They must be stopped at all costs. They cannot be given a seat at the table. And when people like Chris Christie, John McCain, Mitt Romney, and the rest offer that olive branch of friendship, which only turns into a knife in the back, you only help to perpetuate their evil. We had best learn from this, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.